Thank you, Jens, for the very nice introduction. So you're expecting now a lot of smartness from me. I'm not sure if I can deliver, but I will try. Um, when we talk about the role of smart buildings, from my point of view, we look at it first and for all from the point of energy efficiency. So looking at it, energy efficiency in smart building has a lot to do with the context of buildings. So we see the building, the smart building, in the context of the smart city, but also in the context of the smart district. So when we talk about smart buildings, we also mean clever buildings. We mean buildings that can shift loads from one place to another, that can shift energy, and that can only be done if we have a connection to other systems, meaning to other buildings, as in the sense of a district, but also meaning to a bigger um, system, such, for example, the city, meaning to the mobility, but also to other resources that we have in the overall city system. So the smart building is always embedded in the district and the city as such. But what do we actually mean when we talk about smart buildings and why are we talking about this? Well, first of all, when we look at buildings, the fundamental aim of constructing building was always to provide shelter. We mustn't forget that. That's where we started. And what was really clever is to provide that shelter comfort in comfortable conditions under the given climatic conditions. So it does matter where we build our buildings. We shouldn't build the same buildings everywhere. So when we look at architecture, how it developed, it was originally, you could tell from these pictures where these buildings are located. You probably can't tell the country, but you can for sure tell the climate. So you know, for example, that the left building must be in a very hot and dry climate, in a desert climate, or the middle building is probably somewhere in the UK in a temperate climate where you have a lot of rain. And that the third building is probably somewhere in a tropical climate where you have a lot of humidity and you have, need a lot of air flow through the building. So you can tell by the architecture where these buildings are actually located. What are we doing now? We're building something like this. It's a bit cynical, I know. But at the end of the day, you probably wouldn't know, unless you've been there, where these buildings are located. So we don't know anymore from the architecture where these buildings are, meaning we don't really build anymore according to the climate. We build the same everywhere. We don't, not everybody does this, of course, but in general terms, you probably wouldn't know where these buildings are. Well, one is in a desert climate that is in Addis Abeba. The other one is in the UK, in London, and the third one is in Singapore in a tropical climate. And they're interchangeable. So my point is that, first of all, we need to look at the climate and we need to look at the energy efficiency of buildings. If we don't do this, then we get climate change. And what we actually want is this, instead of the dry climate change. So looking back at what we actually want, first of all, to build smart is to build according to the local climate. We must understand the climate in order to build smart. To exploit passive design measures in order to increase energy efficiency. That should always be the first step. Second step, we're looking at exploiting passive design measures first. Then we go into the efficient building system, the technical building system that are connecting the systems within the building, but also the systems to the outside world and, of course, to the integration of renewable energy after we have exploited the passive design measures. Third step would be we're looking at how can we optimize bigger systems, so not just the individual unit of a building or the individual building system as such. Those are incremental improvements. But we want to look at the bigger system of the overall building, but also the bigger system of a district or the bigger system of a city. And in order to do this, we can actually connect these buildings. And that's where we call the buildings smart. So looking at it, we now already that in the EPBD, in the European Performance of Buildings Directive, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, sorry, we already have the energy efficiency as part of that directive. We already have the, the systems and the renewable energy systems as part of the directive. So as a third part, we need to now include the load shifting potential and the system potential of a building within a district or within a city as part of that directive. And this is what you will be talking about in the next days, I guess. So again, looking at the smart cities, when we see the smart cities, this has developed over the last, I would say, six to eight years. The topic of smart cities has evolved rapidly. Why? because we can deal with large quantities of data, which we weren't able to deal with before. Like 20 years ago, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have been able to manage that amount of data. 
You know, we could have listed it down in an Excel sheet maybe or in some other data resource, but we weren't able to allocate that data correctly and we weren't really able to perform better with knowing what data we have. So the data and the incremental use of that, that has allowed us to deal with the topic of smart city, to connect things together and to share data in a meaningful way so that we can actually exploit more efficiency. Now we're coming from the smart city to the smart district to the smart building. Looking at the smart buildings, we can see there are so many things that we can connect with each other in a building. We can connect the heating systems and cooling systems, we can connect the mobility, we can connect to the external thermal and electrical grid. But what does it actually mean? When is a building smart? And I guess that's a question that you will be posing in the next days and that you will be discussing intensively. intensively. When do we really talk about the smart building? Is it when we say we have built the building to very, very high efficiency standard? That's important. That makes a building smart. When we say it responds automatically to external conditions, we have weather predictive control or we have user predictive control, so it responds, building is responsive. When it supplies large amounts of renewable energy, that makes it smart, of course, we can't really do without it, which should include the renewable energy systems in our buildings. When it can feed the energy back into the grid, so when it's a two-way communication, of course, between the system of the building and the system of the grid. And I'm not just talking about the electrical grid, I'm also talking about the thermal grid. Or when the technical building systems are automatically managed, of course, that makes a building smart. We have building management systems that control everything. Or when it has a lot of smart appliances, appliances and gadgets. We can count the gadgets, we can see how many gadgets we have in a room. We have a fridge that orders the milk for us, maybe. Does it make it smart, the building? And these appliances are connected with each other and the user. So I have my app on my phone and I can control my building and can see what it does and the building knows when I come home because the building knows my pattern. The building already knows when I usually go to sleep and the building already knows when I get up and what temperature I would like to have in my room. Does it make it a smart building? Up for discussion, I guess. So when we want to measure smartness, we have to see how do we actually, how do we do this? How do you measure smartness? We have a difficulty already measuring smartness in people because smart is probably not just the IQ, it's a bit more than that. So how do we measure smartness in a building? Well, we could say we can sum up the number of gadgets. We can count the gadgets. That's very quantitatively um, easily done and we're done with that. Or we can say we can assess how many technical items can be controlled with that system. Again, very easy to do and we can do it quantitatively and we just sum it up. Or we could say we can assess if the building, if and how it interacts with the grid and if it does support grid management and in what way it supports grid management. That's something we can assess. Or we can say we can assess how many systems contribute to the internal comfort of the occupants. Or I'm sure in the next days you will come up with a lot of other indicators on how to assess the smartness of a building based on the technical building system, based on information technology. But let's not forget what we're actually talking about and what the EPBD was originally created for has to do with energy and resources and sustainability. So this is something that we just have to keep remembering and not to lose ourselves in all the technology and all the smartness and all the gadgets. Because at the end of the day, sustainability, that's what we want. And that's why we have the EPBD. And from the perspective of the user, we want an easy system. We don't want it complicated. We want it affordable. We want it for everybody. We just don't want it for a few who can afford the smart technical building system, who can afford the latest tablet or the latest system um, and not for everybody. So we want something that is affordable, that is in a social dimension also approachable for everybody. And of course we want it useful, useful for people, useful for me. I want something that has a benefit for my life and not just something because the energy industry maybe wants it and needs some data out of me. 
So for the perspective of the environment as well, we want it local, we want to use local resources, we want to go back one step and think about sustainability. No harmful emission. We don't want building systems that need a lot of energy to actually produce the building systems. We want building systems that are maybe produced somewhere with environmental consciousness in mind as well. So all these dimensions mustn't be forgotten when we talk about the smartness and the gadgets and the systems and the technical details. So how do we measure smartness? So maybe that's a proposition. We could measure, measure smartness when we assess the load shifting potential of buildings. So we could see how much of a building's load in terms of thermal load and the electrical load can be shifted over a certain period of time. And if it can be shifted, how long can it be shifted? Can it be shifted within seconds? Is it really easily responsible? Or can it be shifted within days or even half a year? So seasonal shifting or just weekly shifting or just daily or hourly. That's the real potential that we can assess. We can see how much of the load is usable to be used in another building, in another district or somewhere else. This is an approach that we can deal with and this would include all the things that we have said before. It needs to be energy efficient. If I don't have an energy efficient building, I won't be able to shift huge amount, huge quantities of loads in a building, neither the electrical nor the thermal load because I need it in the building. If I don't have a user-friendly building, I won't be able to do this. So it can include a lot of the aspects. So that's maybe a proposition in order to move forward in something very simple that we can say, what's the load shifting potential? It includes all the cleverness. It includes that we need to be able to shift thermal load, for example, into the building using the thermal mass of the building or using the ground of the building or using maybe another storage aspect of the building. So that's up for discussion. Maybe that's, that's an idea. So at the end of the day, what we would like um, is to have just a very simple third assessment included in the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. So adding to the energy efficiency, the renewable energy, and then adding the load shifting potential. So we can provide an indicator with a label that maybe we are already used to. And the smartness is maybe then more approachable to people. So to conclude, we could say a smart building is offering maximal quality of living with minimal consumption of resources. That should be the basic, that should be our starting point. How do we do this? By exploiting energy efficiency, exploiting passive de design measures to use the maximum energy efficiency that we can get. Second step, by joining an internal and external system to increase the efficiency of the building by joining renewable energy system, making them approachable and usable for other systems within a district and within a city. And the third step, to optimize the load management and the load shifting potential within the buildings. If we make our buildings smart for the future, then that could be the next step. At the end of the day, what we want is to provide high quality built environments. And maybe I should have written high quality built environments for everybody so that's affordable also for everybody. By building high efficient design and using the technological advancements, but using them in a smart and clever way, not just for the sake of the cleverness, but for the sake of sustainability. So do you want more of this and not take away things from other species? So in this sense, I would wish you a very, very fruitful discussion for the next days. I hope it's constructive. I hope it's sometimes confrontational. And I hope you have a very good time in Malta and enjoy the discussions on smart buildings. Thank you very much for your attention.